Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead. O oh, all-pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. The water seen on fire, land seen on water. <coughs> Only, uh, you know, Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaito votra. Paramo nimatsanam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon ulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni prite. Kim vaporeer ishwaraha. Sadyo hridi avarudya tetra. Kriti bihi susu subis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur kapaturur kalitam falam. Sukhamutkad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska buvibhavakaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although this nectarian juice is already relishable for all including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svatkata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Vidyantakshto Bhadrani Vidunati Suhitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, 
Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praisu bhadrisu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo, kama lo badayas chaye, chaita naira navitvam, stitvam sat ve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vigyanam Mukta sangasya jayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante chasyasthe sarvasamsaya chidyante chasya karmani drista evat manishwari Thus, thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 18. Naman yudara ruchira smita sobitani. He parte he jurjuna sake kuru nana nanda niti. Sanjal pitani nara devahi dispir sani. Smartur lutanti lutanti hirdayam mama madavasya. Translation, O King, his joking and frank talks were pleasing and beautifully decorated with smiles. His addresses unto me as O son of Prita, O friend, O son of the Kuru dynasty, and all such hardiness are now remembered by me, and thus I am overwhelmed. Okay, there's no purport, so we'll go to the next word, text 19. Saya sanatana vikatana bojandis dojanadis dojanadis. Akyad vyas vayasya ritavan itivi praladaha. Sakyu sakeva prithivat tanayasya sarvam. Sehe mahan mahitaya kumater agamme. Translation, generally both of us used to live together and sleep, sit and loiter together. And at the time of the advertising of advertising oneself for acts of chivalry, sometimes 
if there were any irregularity, I used to reproach him by saying, my friend, you are very truthful. Even in those hours when his value was minimized, he, being the supreme soul, used to tolerate all those utterings of mine, excusing me exactly as a true friend excuses his true friend or a father excuses his son. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Since the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna is all perfect, his transcendental pastimes with his pure devotees never lack anything in any respect, either as a friend, son, or lover. The Lord relishes reproaches of friends, parents, or fiancés more than the Vedic hymns offered to him by great learned scholars and religionists in an official fashion. <clears throat> well, this is something that is, is described as uh, the license of a lover. In other words, if an ordinary person criticizes the Lord, that would be an offense. If the lover criticizes the beloved, it should not be taken as an offense uh, by, uh, by the Supreme Lord. Why? Because it's done out of love. It's not done out of envy. Now, how do you understand the difference between love and envy? Well, it's by the reaction of the person who's on the receiving end. If they're not insulted, but they're pleased, then there's no harm done. So Krishna is pleased to accept a subordinate position to his pure devotee out of loving reciprocation. So he accepts a subordinate position to Arjuna. He becomes his chariot driver and is taking orders from Arjuna. And he accepts a subordinate position to his mother, uh, uh, Yasoda Mai, uh, because out of love she chastises him sometimes. And he accepts a subordinate position to Srimati Radharani because she is the greatest lover of Krishna. So we see that uh, when the Lord is chastised by his lover or his mother or his friend, he's not insulted. He accepts it in, in, as a transcendental mellow of the relationship. So uh, it says, since the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna is all perfect, his transcendental pastimes with his pure devotees never lack anything in any respect. In other words, we see these things in the material world, but they're contaminated. But the same thing in the spiritual world is perfect and transcendental. And that is extremely hard for people to understand. Because you cannot understand that unless you're purified of lust, anger, and greed, and the influence of the modes of material nature, and you're engaged fully in devotional service to the Lord. Then you enter into a new state of consciousness or a different state of consciousness where you begin to understand these transcendental reciprocations in the spiritual world. So therefore, for example, sex in the material world is like iron, but in the spiritual world, it's gold. But obviously, there's a difference between iron and gold and to understand that difference requires a great amount of knowledge and purification. So we, we read yesterday that the so-called uh, sexual, uh, let's say, relationship in the spiritual world is through the eyes, through the gestures or different facial gestures and, and bodily gestures. It is not... Uh, like in the material world, where it's considered, uh, you know, it's this type of uh, two bodies flapping against each other. So there's a difference between the transcendental uh, relationship of Krishna and his pure devotees 
and the relationships of people in this world. To understand that is almost is impossible for materialistic people. They have to become trained and purified and educated and uh, always engaged in devotional service so that that veil of illusion goes away from their eyes and mind and they can begin to relish transcendental pastimes. That's why these confidential things about Krishna should not be told to uh, materialistic people. Rather, they should try and understand the difference between the body and the soul and the difference between the individual soul and the super soul and to develop uh, this Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma, becoming self-satisfied by virtue of uh, knowledge and realization rather than being self-satisfied by virtue of sense gratification and self-indulgence. So that takes a long, long time, that change of consciousness. It's not an overnight thing. And there are many pitfalls on that path. Uh, but if one accepts to relate properly to Shikshan Diksha Gurus, it becomes possible. In fact, it may even be easy if one strictly follows. But that's, that's why uh, Prabhupada said Krishna consciousness is easy for the humble and honest persons and very difficult for the crooked and uh, uh, deceptive persons. So, so we should not try and be crooked and deceptive, trying to get away with things uh, as if there's no witness to what we're doing. There's always a witness to anything we do. Ultimately, it's the Paramatma, or Krishna in the heart of every living entity, but also the sun, the moon, and so many different living entities are witnessing what we're doing. So this uh, consciousness of Krishna is is the purifying element. In fact, everything depends on how we see things. This is explained in depth uh, where the vision of a Mayavadi or an atheist is explained in comparison to the vision of a devotee. So this is explained in the, in the uh, <coughs> prayers by the personified Vedas in the Bhagavatam. And it says, the conception of a life of sense gratification is illusion, but the conception of service by the Jivatma to the Paramatma, even in this material world, is not at all illusory. So one time Prabhupada was explaining that uh, people have a daydream and a night dream. When you go to sleep at night, whatever happened dur during the day seems like a dream. And when you wake up, whatever you dreamed at night seems like a dream. So you have two dreams, a daydream and a night dream. So a devotee asked a very important question. He said, Prabhupada, then what is reality? Is this also a dream, what we're doing right now with you? And Prabhupada explained that when devotional service is rendered purely, it's not a dream because you've entered into the spiritual world. There's no difference between pure devotional service in the material world and pure devotional service in the spiritual world. So therefore, he's saying here, the, the, the uh, personified Vedas are saying, the conception of a life of sense gratification is illusion. But the conception of service by the jivatma to the paramatma, even in this material world, is not illu at all illusory. A Krishna conscious person is fully aware of this fact, and thus he does not take this material world to be false, but acts in the reality of transcendental service. This answers the question we discussed the other day. Of, uh, uh, Mayavadi say that this world is false. Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. And Vaishnavas say, it's not false, but because of its transitory nature, it, it's illusory. Now, they're saying it's not false. They're saying something opposite to the Mayavadi, but they say 
that because it's transitory, because it's temporary, it's, it's, it's illusory. So let's understand now what that means. It's going to be explained here in more depth. The, de the devotee therefore sees everything in this material world as an opportunity to serve the Lord. He does not reject anything as material, but dovetails everything in the service of the Lord. Thus a devotee is always in a transcendental position, and everything he uses becomes spiritually purified by being used in the Lord's service. Now, this is a profound explanation. And then Prabhupada quotes Sridhar Swami. Sridhar Swami has composed a nice verse in this regard. Sridhar Swami is not the modern Sridhar Swami in the Gaudiya Math, but he's a, uh, I'm pretty sure he was in the, uh, in the uh, Rudra Sampradaya, and he's a pure devotee. I worship the Supreme Personality of God, who is always manifested as reality, even within this material world which is considered by some to be false. So this goes back to a, a, a uh, popular theme in philosophy, and that is what is a primary quality and what is a secondary quality of anything in this material world. So they say primary qualities are things that you can measure, like weight and volume and length and width and breadth and secondary qualities are things that you perceive like colors and sounds and other things actually that is not true the primary quality of everything is krishna because he's present in everything as the paramatma and a secondary quality of everything is how people relate to Krishna. Right? So if you relate to Krishna as an illusion, thinking he's a mundane person or that he doesn't exist at all, then you don't see anything properly. And if you relate to Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and understand that the material nature, the jivatma, the paramatma, all comes from Krishna, the original source of everything, then you see reality. Then you see things as they are. So that's why Sridhar Swami says that I worship the Supreme Personality of God who is always manifested as reality, even within this material world, which is, which is considered by some to be false. And Prabhupada writes, the conception of the falsity of this material world is due to a lack of knowledge but a person advanced in Krishna consciousness sees the Supreme Personality of Godhead in everything. This is actual realization of the Vedic aphorism, Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma. Everything is Brahman. So this Vedic aphorism is misinterpreted by the Mayavadis. And they say, they quote it all the time. They quote these two things, Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya and Sarvam Klav Idam Brahma. Sarvam Klav Klav Idam Brahma means that Krishna is present in everything, is Paramatma. So that is what this, this means. But the Mayavadis say that this uh, impersonal Brahma Jyoti is everything. And everything else that you think you see or think exists is false, including Krishna. You see, you see how, how vicious. That's why no one is the, no one is the worst uh, Aparadis are the Mayavadis. Worse than the atheists. They're, they're, they're the super duper, uh, let's say, atheism on, on, uh, on uh, steroids, right? Because they, they directly insult Krishna all the time. Okay, so then Prabhupada goes, and then the personified Vedas continue. He says, they say, Dear Lord, less intelligent men take to other ways of self-realization, but actually there's no chance of becoming purified from material contamination or of stopping the repeated cycle of birth and death unless one is a thoroughly pure devotee. Dear Lord, everything rests on your different potencies and everyone is supported by you 
as stated in the Vedas, Eko Bahunam Yo Vidadati Kaman. Therefore, your Lordship is the supporter and maintainer of all living entities, demigods, human beings, and animals. Everyone is supported by you, and you are also situated in everyone's heart. In other words, you are the root of the whole creation. That's why Krishna is the primary quality of everything. There's no such thing as land, breath, wealth, weight, and so forth, primary qualities. That's all speculation. Therefore, those who engage in your devotional service without deviation, who always worship you, actually pour water on the root of the universal tree. By devotional service, therefore, one satisfies not only the personality of Godhead, but also all others, because everyone is maintained and supported by him, meaning Krishna. Because a devotee understands the all-pervasive feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is the most practical philanthropist and altruist. Such pure devotees, thoroughly engaged in Krishna consciousness, very easily overcome the cycle of birth and death, and they as much as jump over the head of death. Imagine that, jumping over the head of death. <clears throat> A devotee is never afraid of death or of changing his body. His consciousness is transformed into Krishna consciousness. And even if he does not go back to Godhead, even if he transmigrates to another material body, he has nothing to fear. A vivid example is Bharat Maharaja. Although in his next life, he became a deer. In the life after that, he became completely free from all material contamination and was elevated to the kingdom of God. The Bhagavad Gita affirms, therefore, that a devotee is never vanquished. A devotee's path to the spiritual kingdom, back home, back to God, it is guaranteed. Even though a devotee slips in one birth, the continuation of his Krishna consciousness elevates him further and further until he goes back to Godhead. Not only does a pure devotee purify his own personal existence, but whoever becomes his disciple also becomes purified, and is ultimately able to enter the kingdom of God without difficulty. In other words, not only can a pure devotee easily surpass death, but by his grace, his followers can also do so without difficulty. The power of devotional service is so great that a pure devotee can electrify another person by his transcendental instruction on crossing over the ocean of nations. Haribo, glory to the Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? It is, it's the uh, 80, what is it, 7th, 87th chapter of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto. The prayers by the personified Vedas. There's so many important uh, explanations. There's another important thing, if we have time, if you want to hear it now, or we could save it for tomorrow. Or we'll save it for tomorrow. Okay. All glories to Srila Prabhupada Kiji. This is an ocean of nectar. <laughs> The nectar is flowing unimpeded. When will everyone realize it? 